The Origami Master by Nathaniel Lockenmeyer. Shima the Origami Master lived alone, high up in the mountains. He never had visitors. His origami kept him company. One day, a warbler chose the tree in Shima's backyard for its nest. It flew back and forth, collecting twigs. When the warbler was done for the day, it sat on a branch and watched Shima doing origami. From time to time, it sang, Ho Hokio! Ho Hokio! That evening, after Shima went to bed, the warbler flew in through the open doorway and alighted on his desk. It began to fold a piece of paper the way it had seen Shima do. The next morning, Shima discovered a new paper elephant on his desk. He picked it up and examined it closely. It was simpler and more beautiful than any of the ones he had made. Someone is playing a trick on me, he thought. Shima threw his elephants away. He decided to make a dragon. In his opinion, his origami dragons were the best in the world. In the morning, Shima found a magnificent new dragon on his desk. It looked like it was about to come to life and fly back to its lair. Shima spent the day folding origami spiders. At dusk, he left his best spider on his desk. Then he hid in the hall. He was determined to find out who was making the origami. In the middle of the night, the warbler flew inside and began making an origami spider. Shima watched in amazement. He decided to try to catch the warbler and learn its secrets. Just after sunrise, Shima hiked down the mountain to the city below. He bought a large bird cage and a lock, and he returned home. That night, Shima hid under his desk. When the warbler arrived, he caught it and put it in the cage. The warbler cried and beat its wings against the cage but it could not escape. Shima brought the warbler his best origami paper. He gathered nuts and berries for it to eat, but the warbler just stared sadly at the tree where its nest was waiting. Shima stayed up all night, making every origami animal he could think of. The warbler did not look at any of them. Finally, as the sun rose in the sky, Shima fell asleep. When Shima woke up, he found the cage door open and the warbler gone. The lock was lying next to the cage. Beside it was an origami key. Shima ran outside. The warbler's nest was empty. It made Shima sad to think that he had scared the bird away. Then he saw the warbler returning to the tree with a twig in its beak. He smiled when he heard its beautiful song, Ho Ho Kyo, Ho Ho Kyo. Shima realized how much he would miss the warbler if it left. He sat down and began work on something new, an origami nest for the friend he had made and almost lost. Now I'm going to show you how to make this really simple origami bird. So start with a fresh sheet of origami paper and you're going to fold it perfectly in half. So go from this point to this point. So bring up the paper, fold it up so it creates a nice clean triangle. Make sure that you crease it well. And now turn the model so it faces in this direction. So you're going to take this edge, so go ahead and flap it up. So you're going to take this top piece, this top edge, and you're going to meet it with this line. So fold it up. You see this point? I'm going to fold it just like that. So keep practicing and it will turn into this shape. Okay, so now draw a line with your finger. It can be wherever you'd like. And you're going to take that piece and you're going to fold it up. It will look like this. Now turn the model over and look how easy that was. You made an easy origami bird. The Cuckoo's Reward by Daisy Kuzel and Earl Philander, a folktale from Mexico. The cuckoo that we know today is a plain, dull bird. Her feathers are the color of ashes, and the only sound she can make is cuckoo. 
She lays her eggs in the nests of other birds who take care of her children for her. But the cuckoo was not always as she is today. Far from it. Long ago, she was a beautiful bird with feathers of many colors, like the rainbow, and her singing was lovely to hear. She raised her own young, just like any other bird. This was in the old days, when the gods ruled over Mexico. Some of these gods were violent and dangerous. One caused thunder and lightning, and another, who lived underground, made the world tremble with earthquakes. Other gods were friendly to men and animals. Among these were the sky god, the sun god, and the beautiful goddess of the moon. The most beloved of all was Shock, the god of rain and good harvest. He was kind and handsome, and he looked after the crops so that all of the creatures of the earth had food to eat. Shock's bitter, bitterest enemy was the god of fire, a mischief maker who was always thinking of new tricks to play on others. One morning in spring, Shock called a meeting of the birds on a hilltop near the forest. The time has come to get ready for spring planting, he said. Will you help me, as you always do? The nightingale twilled, the sparrow chirped, the crow cawed. Each bird said yes in its own way. Only the cuckoo remained silent, for she had forgotten what she was supposed to do. Tomorrow at sunrise, you must begin your work, said the kind god and it must be finished by noon, because at that time the god of fire will come to burn the old plants. On hearing the word fire, the cuckoo became frightened and began to flutter around the circle of birds. Her colorful feathers shone in the sun, filling the other birds with envy. What must we do? What must we do? Well, the poor cuckoo. I don't remember what we did last year. Of course you don't remember, said the wise owl. You didn't come to help us. She is afraid of fire. That is why she didn't help, explained the green parrot, who was more jealous than the other birds of the cuckoo's beauty. That's not true, protested the cuckoo. I am not afraid. But it was true. The cuckoo was afraid that the fire might burn her splendid feathers. She ought to do her share of the work too, grumbled the robin. You're right, agreed the crow. What a coward. At this, the cuckoo felt ashamed and began to cry. The shock raised his hand and asked for silence. I am sure that this year everyone will help, he said. He smiled at the cuckoo and then at the other birds. Here's what you have to do, he continued. Tomorrow, as soon as the sun rises, fly to the fields, gather the seeds from the old plants and pile them near the woods. Then the seeds will be planted and we will have new crops. But remember, the god of fire will come at noon to burn the old plants. If you do not finish in time, the seeds will burn too. Then there will be no crops next year, and everyone will go hungry. All night long, while the other birds were sleeping, the wise old owl kept watch. Shortly before sunrise, he heard a loud crackling noise, as of burning firewood. The owl flew high above the trees and looked down. You can't imagine his alarm when he saw the god of fire, who was running through the fields, setting them on fire with his torch. That troublemaker got us up early to trick us, thought the owl in anger, and he started to fly through the woods shouting, to the fields, to the fields, we must save the seeds. But the fields were burning so rapidly and the air was so hot that the birds could not get close. Then they saw something wonderful. A strange bird was flying back and forth through the flames, carrying the seeds to a safe place. Who is that gray bird? asked the owl. How strong and brave it is. The gray bird took the last seed from the burning fields, then it sank, exhausted, into a shallow brook and cooled itself in the water. The other birds flew to the brook and hovered over the water, trying to find out who the stranger was. Is it the thrush? asked the crow. It looks like the cuckoo, said the parrot, but I can't believe it. Why, it really is the cuckoo, cried the robin. Then they all looked closely at the bird who had saved the seeds. Her feathers were all, all gray from the smoke, but at last, they recognized the cuckoo. Yes, yes, they cried, it is the cuckoo, there is no doubt. All the birds began to thank the cuckoo for her brave deed, and the woods rang with singing and chirping, but the poor cuckoo could hardly answer. The smoke had parched her throat, and her beautiful singing voice was gone. Cuckoo was all she could say. The birds were so grateful to the cuckoo for saving the seeds that they gave her reward. 
they agreed to care for her children and her children's children forever. That's how it happened that the cuckoo's feathers turned gray and how she lost her singing voice. And that is the reason why, to this day, the cuckoo lays her eggs in the nests of other birds who raise her children for her. Now I'm going to show you how to create a traditional origami bird. So start with a fresh sheet of origami paper and we are going to fold it in half. So from this point to this point. Go ahead and lift it up and fold. And now go ahead and unfold it and turn the paper and we are going to do the same thing. So we're going to fold in half from this point to this point. Okay, crease it well. Now turn it. And you're going to grab this tip of the triangle and you're going to fold it up. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Okay, now lift up this top sheet of paper. You see how it flaps upward? Pick it up and you're going to make it into a diamond shape. Just like so. Now go ahead and you're going to turn, and you're going to fold the entire model in half. So from this tip to this tip. Okay, and it will look like this. And these are the wings. So go ahead and grab one of the wings and fold it down. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So flip the model over, grab one of the wings, and fold it down. Make sure this all lines up. Okay, so this is the bird's beak. So just like the hood fold and the pocket fold that we had done on the turtle and on the boat, we're going to take this tip, let me turn around so you can see it better, we're going to take this tip and go ahead and fold it down. So it'll look like that. Then you're going to fold it back up, open up that little flap, then you're going to tuck it in. So actually on this side you can see that it becomes a diamond shape almost. Let's go ahead and tuck it down and in, and that becomes the bird's beak.